All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome to another Android tutorial. Uh, today we're going to have a look at unit testing because, quite frankly, it's one of the coolest things you can do. We're going to look at how to set that up at Gradle properly because unit testing in Eclipse and the you know, instrument testing was just no. <laughs> you just didn't do it. It was impossible. But anyway, uh, today we're going to have a look at unit testing on Android Studio, which is way, way, way better. So the first thing we're going to t do is, you know, we have our, uh, you know, our main our activity here. We're going to just uh, create a few views as soon as the render library starts. There we go. So we just have a hello world, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm assuming, by the way, for this tutorial that you know loosely what unit testing is, but the quick breezer is unit testing is uh, writing code essentially are writing tests to test your code so you know you should you have a method that you know takes in two numbers it adds them you should you know give it like you know two and two and the result you test to see if the result is four it's a bit mad but it is very very cool anyway uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna you know set up unit testing so unit testing doesn't run like a normal app it runs the app starts up the activity let's say you want to test if views exist in an activity starts up the activity runs the test closes the activity down starts it up again runs more tests close it down just it's based on JUnit anyway enough about testing let's actually start setting it up so we're going to create one instrument test and one unit test uh, an instrument test the difference is just an instrument test tests functionality of like you know UI stuff like that what well, instrument tests just test or unit tests test you know one unit of an app Anyway, to start it off, under our source folder, in our module, we're going to create a new directory, and we're going to call this instrument test. You don't have to call it this. It doesn't really matter. And under this, we're going to create a new directory called Java. And under the instrument test, as you can see, Java has come up. It's actually it's detected that it's a testing folder. And under here, we're going to create a new package name, which is going to be the same as our current package, but with test on the end. It's a new, no, not new activity, bugger off. New package, and then we're just going to say com. Twisted equations dot unit testing. dot tests okay so we've created our package and we're ready to start writing our first test so what we're going to do in here is our what we need to do first actually is set up our gradle to tell gradle where our unit test is so when we tell gradle to do a unit test it knows where to go so we have all this uh, nonsense here under I believe it's default config. Let me double check this. Okay, so I found I found what it is. It's uh, under default config under Android. You type in test package name. Name. And then in commas, you put in the full package name we have here. We just copy and paste. That didn't work because I'm an idiot. So now everything under this package will be executed, or all the tests under that package name will be executed whenever we uh, type in the command to do that with Gradle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a unit test. So we're going to create a new class, and we're just going to call this, you know, uh, just going to call this number adder, and we're going to create a method in here, public, uh, you know, int. Just to show you what an, a unit test looks like and how it runs. Uh, 
and then return. One plus two. So there we go. Done. Actually, you know what? Let's go fancy. Let's make it static. Anyway, so there's our uh, number adder class. We should always add two numbers. Okay? And down here, and we have our activity, and we're going to test if the text view exists. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to write our unit test first. So, we're going to create a new Java class in here, and it's going to be called a, we're going to call this a number. number adder test and we extend test case which is for JUnit so it's all based on the JUnit framework which is really cool so we extend our test case now what happens when uh, we'll explain how this runs essentially but it goes in here and it runs all the methods that start with test so let's get our uh, start, or our method, you know, our thing started. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, we're going to write a method, so you have to be public void test number adder, no parameters. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to create an instance of number adder. Oh, wait, we don't need that at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two numbers. Actually, we're not going to even do that. We're going to say int result. And we're going to add two and two. Okay, so we're going to just add the two numbers. And then this function should always add numbers. Therefore, Actually, say two and three. Uh, therefore, the result of this particular running should always be four. So to actually test our assumptions, we use what's called an assert true, or assert equals, okay, result, and five. So that will compare the two answers, compare what we expect to be our answer, which is our five, which actually should be over here, and this is the result over here. So that's our expected answer, that's our actual answer. Compare the two of them, make sure they're equal. If they're equal, the test will pass. So that's a unit test. Just test one block of functionality at a time, nothing else. Tests are supposed to be, you know, it's fairly stupid anyway. They're supposed to be like, you know, just like that. Anyway, the next test. Our next thing I'm going to show you is, let's say you know, you've got this class and you want to it has a complicated setup. Let's say you know you have to initialize a constructor and do a bunch of stuff. Uh, in each each of these test cases, you're going to have to do that constructing of the object, and that's just painful and time-consuming and a waste. You, ideally, you could make a method in here, and that would work. But what we're going to do is we're going to override a method called setup, and what all this does is every single time before a test is run the setup method is called the test is run and then the teardown method is called and then let's say you had 50 tests in here or 50 test methods it would do all of them uh, it's also good practice to annotate these with you know tests so this is a small test uh, this is for the suite builder which is for the instrument test runner we're not really using that JUnit run it, but I put these on it anyway because I, I like them. So it's a small test. So what happen, what will happen is the, the testing framework will start up this class, run this, run this, or test assumptions, run that. Then it will move on to the next test, which should be another method, and then do it all again. So that's a unit test. So let's uh, create an instrumentation test. And this is going to be main activity test and this is going to extend instrument and oh no, it's activity I think yeah activity test case 2 okay 
and you have to pass in the actual the class itself so main dot class and you have to create your constructor and your constructor we get rid of this nonsense here we have to pass in the main activity dot class part I don't know what's happened to the syntax here but it's gone mental the hell happened oh that's it <laughs> you don't pass in the doc class you just pass main activity for the type what am i even thinking java types what do you even have you know i'm not supposed to do that anyway anyway uh let's do our you know our activity and stuff so what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance variable for this test and we're just going to call it main activity activity now we're going to create our setup method so setup in our setup method we're going to say activity equals get activity this method starts the activity so when we say get activity the activity will actually start up and go through all of its lifecycle checks and then once it's started up it runs the unit tests or the instrumentation tests so let's write our test public void test text view not null and this is a small test so what we're going to do is we're going to get a text view you know the usual nonsense we're going to get our activity dot find view by id or dot id dot text view so that nonsense and then we're going to say assert not null text view and that's it that should be test by the way there we go assert not null text view done so let's start up the activity and do that we're not going to implement the teardown because there's no need so let's get to actually running these tests and there's two ways you can run them you can run them through android studio or through gradle we're going to run them through gradle so down here in the bottom corner uh, bottom left click this little button if you don't have the button there's a, a few buttons down here you need to see the terminal one there's a little if you don't see anything in this corner click this little small button down here and you'll see it open up a terminal and we're inside the unit testing project so what we're going to do is we're going to run our unit tests and for this I'm actually going to do something very fancy I actually have here a live preview of one of my Android devices the transformer prime tablet so you'll actually see the test running on this so the command to run this is it's a standard gradle command so it's gradle w.bat for windows if it was um, uh, mac or linux you type dot slash gradle w and we're going to type in the command connected instrument test okay so now it's loading, configuring, resolving a bunch of dependencies, doing a bunch of fancy stuff. Okay, I spelt it wrong because I'm a clog, I'm a clot. Great. God damn, you can't copy and paste text in the terminal. I don't like terminals. They're cool and all, but 
and they are really how the computer works but I don't like them because they slow me down there we go connected instrument test so it's configuring doing its stuff and you should see the activity flash up very quickly on the left once it's done so we're building and you should see very quickly flick up on screen here the activity and then we'll take a look at the report there we go so it's ran the tests and build successful so let's take a look at our results the results are stored in the build folder under reports index you, you instrument test connected blah 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 let's take a look open in browser let's pull in my browser window and as you can see two tests passed so let's take a look at our classes oh you, you can't see this <laughs> whoops um hang on a sec i'll just uh, fix that up okay so i just uh, fixed it up i hadn't got it set up on android studio on android studio on open broadcaster to record browser so anyway, there's our thing. So it took 1.356 seconds to run the test. Two tests, and as you can see, the main activity test passed. And if you go back to classes, the number test passed as well. And you can see how long it takes for the tests to run and everything. So let's make a test fail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say a certain null on this, which means that this text view should be null. And if we do the command again in the terminal, I got a notification on my device. So let's just exit that, run the unit tests, and the test will fail because we told it to be null and it's not going to be null. So there we go. I'm actually going to rerun that because I wasn't uh, switched back to studio. So I just set this to a certain null here. Blah, blah, blah. Unit testing compile, connected instrument test, blah, blah, blah. Flick. And build failed. Let's take a look at our reports. Open a browser. Switch over to the browser, and as you can see, 50% successful packages. Fail test. Text view not null. And that's essentially unit testing. So you're probably wondering what's the point of unit testing overall. It's really be uh, not useful if it's not any use if you're building or you're on your own because you know how everything works. But if you're in a group of people working on a project, unit testing is very important. So let's say I'm, you know, I've built this number adder method, okay? And it returns two numbers, but somebody else finds out that it doesn't work for them, that method, and they change it. Now, because they change the method and it returns an unexpected value, let's say they set it to multiply, and you know, they set to multiply and it still works. The uh, multiply method, or the multiply, you know, they said to multiply, it'll work for like two, two plus two and that kind of thing, but it won't work for two and three. That's why I unit test it, so that that method should always have this functionality and should not change. And unit testing is a, a very, very cool thing to do, but this is mostly for groups and, you know, big organizations, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned a little bit about how to set up some instrument and unit tests. And as always, guys, it's been good talk. And I'll see you out there.